Yeah. All right, you guys. So, uh, quick recap of what we've done so far. We've got our board here that we're working on dressing to something that's nice and square we can actually use in a project. First thing we did is we went to the miter saw and we cut to rough length, right? And that was done half an inch longer than we need for our final length. Then we went to the band saw and we ripped it to rough width, right? Again, half an inch wider than we actually need it for our final size. Then we went to the jointer and we jointed our reference face which we marked with that little six, and we jointed a reference edge, which we marked with a V that points to the six, right? Why is it important that these marks are good? To base it on the other ones. Right, so everything that we do from this point on is measured from or referenced from these two faces because we already know that these two faces are flat and square to each other, okay? So the next step we're gonna do is we are going to plane this down to its final thickness, okay? And I want this to be exactly at one inch thick. Okay, so I'm dressing this now to final size at one inch thick. So for that we're gonna need a thickness planer, okay? This machine is very similar to the jointer in that it has uh, a large drum full of cutter teeth on it and that's located here, in this case, on the top side, right? The jointer, the cutter's on the bottom, planer from the top. And we have a table here that moves up and down and allows us to adjust to our, to our board. Um, if you guys make comments, it is actually in the video, so <laughs> just, just saying. If you want to be a YouTube star, and just yeah. get in the picture with me. Yeah. Alright, um, to set this up for a first pass, Again, we're not, we're not taking off a lot of material at a time, okay? We will have to take off a fair bit of material at the end of it, but we only want to remove about a millimeter of material every, every time, okay? So for that to happen, we need to set this up properly to do our first pass. And this is probably the most complicated part of this. It's not a very difficult thing to do, but this is the most complicated part. So take your ruler and just measure the thickest part of the board. Remember that we're still dealing with, with rough wood, so you can have a board that may have been sawn unevenly and has some kind of waves in it. You're looking for the thickest part of that board, okay, whether it be the end or somewhere in the middle, and you're going to measure it. And this board is about an inch and three sixteenths. Okay? So on the side of the, of the planer right here, I've got a little scale. There's a little red arrow, if you can't see it, and then there's, a, there's another ruled scale on the side here. And this indicates the adjustment of the table. So we're going to set this machine to the same thickness as our wood current is. So in this case, an inch and three sixteenths. So with the hand wheel on the side, we're going to roll this thing up. What does the hand wheel do? Well, this hand wheel, as I turn it, it's raising this table. If I turn the hand wheel the other way, it, it lowers it down. Okay, so I'm moving the table up, and we're almost there. So I'm at an inch and three sixteenths right now, so it's the same thickness as our board. And of course, if I run the board through now, it's not going to take anything off. So I want to actually move the hand wheel another half a turn. Okay, half a turn on this machine ends up being about a millimeter. Okay, so uh, you're going to run your material through. You can run every board through that is the same piece, right? Put them up here, and then once all of your boards have been run through, then crank your wheel a half turn and run them all through again, right? This helps make our pieces more consistent in size if we run them all through in a batch, all right? So, there we have our table height set. Safety stuff. What do I need to do? What do I need to do wearing safety wise on this thing? Safety glasses, right? So I'm gonna make sure my safety and glasses ear. are on. And earmuffs. This machine is pretty loud, right? And I do want to see you guys wearing earmuffs on this machine. There's a couple things that can happen on on when you're using this machine, okay? Um, sometimes your wood can get stuck in there, right? Um, if that happens, 
All right, there's a couple of things you can do, and this is important that you pay attention to. You can have a push stick handy. Um, you can, yeah, you can use this one. A push stick for this machine is, could even just be another, any, any other board that's, uh, that's thinner than your actual board. And if the board gets stuck, you can go in there, stand to the side, and just help it out with a push stick. Help it. Hopefully, it's, hopefully you're not going to have to put your push stick kind of in there. Just kind of help get it to drive onto the feed rollers that are in there. Um, and hopefully that'll, that'll work. Okay, so you can use a push stick to help it through. You can, worst case scenario, let's say you get this thing going and you realize that, oh wow, I've got a really fat part of the board coming up I didn't realize it's starting to get, take way too heavy a cut. You can stop the machine, stand to the side, wait for it to stop, lower the table, take the board up, and reset. Okay? So you can do that as well, kind of as a last case scenario. You can stop the machine, wait for it to fully stop, then lower the table, and take your board up. You never want to get down here and look in and see why it's stuck. I know it's like, it's like human nature, it's like moth to light. You just have to see what's going on, but don't do that. Because if this, and remember that our cutter head is traveling in this direction. So if for whatever reason, something catches and our board wants to shoot back, you don't want the face in the way. There are anti-kickback fingers in here that, that allow, or that don't allow the board to come back, but best practice, don't get down and put your face in line with where that's going to come out. Okay, sound good? All right. Um, this thing makes a lot of chips, right? So we also are going to have the dust collector on and our flap open here so that it's going to take all the chips away. Any questions here before we fire this thing up and get it going? Uh, I'm going to run this without the dust collector just for the sake of the demo, but, um, but yeah, normally we would always have the dust collector. Okay, so my earmuffs are on. Oh, what's the, uh, what's the shortest board that we can put through this machine? One foot. One foot, right, 12 inches. If you put a board through here much shorter than about this short, it's not going to feed well, it's going to twist in here, it's just going to become dangerous. Okay? So anything less than 12 inches long does not go through this machine. How thin can I thickness plane down to on this machine? A quarter inch. Yeah, so a quarter inch is about 6 millimeters, right? So I can actually plane relatively thin on this machine. Alright, let's do this. So here I'm off on. On buttons over here. I know it's not. It's this machine is actually relatively quiet because the knives are very sharp and it's a new style cutter head. It is actually a, a quite a quiet machine. Well, Quieter than the other stuff. Is that right? What is this for? Okay, that's a good question, Brad. So there's a lever here. Uh, this engages or disengages the the drive rollers here to feed the board through. Okay, so we're basically going to always leave it engaged or in the in the up position. Okay, so that was a pretty good first pass. Um, don't ever put your fingers, don't, you don't ever want to be putting your fingers in this area here. Don't try to push the board through. If it gets stuck, don't try to push it in. Use a push stick, okay? Um, if, you, if it gets stuck and you've got a substantial amount of board out the backside, you can kind of give it a little tug and help it out. Sometimes that is needed. As long as the board is already off of the out feed table, you can kind of, you can do that. Okay? This meter here is actually uh, to raise and lower the table. This machine used to have a power feed on it, which lowered and raised the table automatically, but it doesn't work. So it's just there for people to stop. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Um, we're going to continue here just to do some sequence passes, a half a turn at a time, and we're going to get this thing all the way down, checking it, checking it every time with the ruler to make sure that we don't go too small and we're going to go all the way down to one inch. Any questions? No. All 
All right. Which side of this board am I putting down on the table? The marked side. The marked side, right? My reference face goes down on the table. That way, when it's taking on material off the top, I know for certain that this surface is parallel to my reference face. Right? That's the whole idea of why we establish this reference face to begin with. Questions? All right, that's it. Thank you, cameraman.